Hello, welcome again to MathsWithDavid.com. I'm David Swanson and today we're going to be looking at a, an international A-level question from the paper Pure Mathematics 3, focusing on the topic complex numbers. So as always, we'll start by carefully reading through the question. The complex number u is given by u equals minus 1 plus 4 root 3 times i. Part 1. Without using a calculator and showing all your working, find the two square roots of u. Give your answers in the form a plus ib, where real numbers a and b are exact. In part 2, on an argand diagram, sketch the locus of points representing complex numbers z, satisfying the relation z modulus of z minus u equals 1. Determine the greatest value of arg z for points on this locus. So, for our first question here, to find the square roots of a complex number, what we do is we write our square root with letters instead of numbers in, so for instance, a plus bi. And we say a plus bi squared gives us the, the square that we've been given. So in our case, we have a plus bi all squared is minus 1 plus 4 root 3 times i. And then if we expand our a plus bi, we get a squared plus 2abi minus b squared equals minus 1 plus 4 root 3i. Now what we have to do is compare the real component on the left hand side and the right hand side of the equation and also compare the imaginary component on the left hand side and the right hand side of the equation. So what we have is a squared minus b squared equals minus 1 and 2ab equals 4 root 3. Now this is a system of two equations that we can solve in order to solve it, we can start off by finding out a value for a in the second equation and then substitute that into the first equation. Now here, to get our value for a, we divide both sides by 2b in the second equation to give us a is equal to 4 root 3 over 2b or 2 root 3 over b. We then take that value of a and substitute it into the first equation. So we say 2 root 3 over b all squared minus b squared equals minus 1. Now, if we multiply by b squared here, we're going to have a quartic equation to the power of 4. So to make our life a little easier, as we only have b squareds figuring here, what we can do is we can replace our b squared by c. So if we, if we square what's in the brackets there, we'll see 2 root 3 squared is 12, because 2 squared is 4, and root 3 squared is 3, 4 times 3 is 12. So we've got 12 over b squared minus b squared equals minus 1, and we can substitute b squared for c to give us 12 over c minus c equals minus 1. Then when we multiply by 3 by c, we've got 12 minus c squared equals minus c, which rearranges to, to give a straightforward quadratic equation, c squared minus c minus 12 equals 0. If you can't spot the factors, you're welcome to use the quadratic formula, which a lot of you will see here that we have uh, c minus 4 and c plus 3 as our factorised form of this quadratic equation. So we know that c is equal to either 4 or minus 3. Now we define c as b squared, and b here is the um, imaginary part of a complex number. So this can't itself be imaginary, this is a real number. So if it's a real number, it can't have a negative square. So we reject our answer minus 3, and we keep only the answer c equals 4, which tells us in order for b squared to equal 4, b must be either 2 or minus 2. So we've got two possible answers for b, 2 and minus 2. And we need to go all the way back up to our initial pair of equations and find the simplest ones to, to substitute b in to find what a is equal to. So let's use the second one. If we put uh, the positive 2 into our, our second equation, we get 2 times a times 2 equals 4 root 3. Which if we cancel 4s on both sides, gives us a equals root 3. So we've got this one pair of, of numbers, a equals root 3 and b equals 2. If we try it with b equals minus 2, in the same equation, 
we get 2 times a times minus 2 equals 4 root 3. So minus 4a equals 4 root 3. So a equals minus root 3. So we have two possible answers. Root 3 plus 2i or minus root 3 minus 2i. So the second part has two bits to it. The first bit wants us to sketch a locus of points, that just means a path of points following this rule. And then the second part wants us to find the greatest value of the argument. So the first part is straightforward. We can draw our argon diagram, draw the real x-axis and the imaginary y-axis. And we know that the center of our, our circle, we've got a locus, point, locus of points here, which are all the same distance from this given point u. So if all points are the same distance from a given point u in a two-dimensional plane, that means we're dealing with a circle. And the circle here has radius 1 because they're all the distance of, of 1 from the given point. So we can find the coordinates minus 1 and plus 4 root 3. 4 root 3 is just a little bit less than 7. And we can mark that point as the centre of the circle. And then we can just draw, just sketch a circle of radius 1 there. That's our part for sketching it. The second bit, we need to find the greatest value of the argument. Now, the, the, we're going to, so we've got a, an angle, a line passing through the origin, and when it's at its greatest angle, this is going to be when it's tangent to the circle, because any greater than tangent is not going to touch the circle, and any less than tangent, the angle is going to be smaller. So the greatest angle is going to be tangent to the circle. So if we know that, we can use what we know about circles and their tangents to say that the normal at the point where the tangent touches the circle is at right angles to the tangent and passes through the centre of the circle. So if we call that line A, which we've actually got the radius of the circle there, A, and we call B the line that goes to the centre of the circle, well, we've actually got a right angle triangle. So because of the right angle triangle, we can use trigonometry to find this part angle alpha here. So we can say, okay, the sine of alpha is going to be A over B, because A is opposite to that angle, and B is the hypotenuse of the right angle triangle. That's going to let us find alpha, so alpha is arc sine of 1 over the square root of minus 1 squared, the x-coordinate squared, plus 4 root 3 all squared, the y-coordinate squared. So 1 over the square root of 1 plus 48, 1 over the square root of 49, so 1 over 7. So we've got alpha is the arc sine of 1 over 7. Then if we think of the remaining angle that we need to get, if we call that beta, now let's ignore the first 90 degrees. So let's say we're dealing with beta minus 90 degrees. Now we can, we can draw a horizontal line from our centre across to the y-axis because we know that horizontal distance is 1 because we know the, the x-coordinate is minus 1. And again, we've got our same line B, our, our line going to the centre, which we already found out has length 7. So here we can say the sine of 90 minus beta is 1, the opposite side, over 7. So we've got beta minus 90 is also the arc sine of 1 over 7. So we want the complete angle. We want alpha plus beta, um, now, that's going to be, to get alpha plus beta, well, we've got alpha, we've got beta minus 90, so we need to add 90 to the sum of those. So it's actually going to be 90 plus 2 times the arc sine of 1 over 7. The arc sine of 1 over 7 to three decimal places is 8.213. So we've got 90 plus 2 times by 8.213, which is 106.43 degrees and you'd be given the mark even if you gave the answer in, in radians. So that's the solution to the questions. Now let's have a look at how they will be, will be marked by an examiner. So the first question, you have a, a method mark that you get for squaring and equating parts. So as long as we take the, the square of a a plus B I or an X plus Y I, as long as we equate the two parts, we get one mark, even if our numbers are incorrect, and then we get a second accuracy mark for finding that A squared minus B squared equals minus 1, and 2AB equals 4 root 3 for getting those accurate. Our second method mark we get, so our third mark altogether, 
if we were able to get an equation in just one variable, so you remember we substituted for A, and, and that let us get everything in terms of B. So if you could get a, an equation in terms of one variable, you get one method mark, and you'll, then you'll get an accuracy mark if you're able to get your quadratic equation C squared minus C minus 12 equals zero. You would also get that mark if you put B to the four minus B squared minus 12 equals zero and didn't substitute. And then you've got a final accuracy mark for getting the two correct answers, root 3 plus 2i and minus root 3 minus 2i. The marking in the second part of the question, you've got two marks for the sketch bit and two marks for the largest argument bit. The two marks for the sketch bit, the easier marks in my opinion, uh, you get one for drawing a circle roughly in the right place, so left of the, of the y-axis and, and up a bit, uh, and you get a second mark if the radius is accurately 1. So you've got two marks for drawing a circle of radius 1 that's more or less in the right place. It's a sketch, so it doesn't have to be measured accurately. Then the two marks for the, the finding the largest angle part, one mark is for the method. So if you get the incorrect answer, but you use a method like we've used here, using trigonometry, and apply it co correctly but just with the wrong numbers and you get one mark and then you'll get a second mark if you accurately get 106.43 degrees. So that's our Pure Mathematics 3 question on complex numbers. We have other complex number Pure Mathematics 3 questions. We'll put the links up at the end of this video. So please feel free to take, take a look at those. And please, if you get a chance, subscribe to the, the video course and then you'll be notified if other videos come through that might be useful to you. We hope you've enjoyed the course and look forward to seeing you on other videos. Bye-bye.